Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide. I Maybe th- today I should say I'm your trail guide, Bear Wozniak, because we have as our guest today, Father Bryce. He's a, a cowboy priest from Wyoming. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We say here in, uh, in our ministry that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And that's what, that's what living in God's will is like. It makes you, when, you, when, you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're, when you're seeking God's will, you become fully human. You come, become fully alive. It's like uh, having a, a, a toy, a child's toy, uh, and it's really fun to play with, and then you put the batteries in, and it, start, and it lights up. That's what it's like when you, give, when you give your life to Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to say, I know it's true that when, I, when we're, we're here in Waikiki, a lot of people are coming and going, uh, and then sometimes you'll, be talk, you'll have a, be happen to have a conversation with someone. You can sense the light of Christ in them. You know when they've given their lives to Jesus. The Holy, our spirits witness, the Holy Spirit witnesses to, to you that, that, that he's, he's alive and, and, and uh, has brought that person to life. That's what really, living, what really living is. And what's interesting is like here in Waikiki, a lot of people will come and they love to the palm trees and they love the sand and they love everything about Waikiki. But they never, uh, they never jump in the ocean. You know, they they might go in ankle deep, but they never dive in. And and uh, and so we we invite you to dive in head first into the will of the Lord. Just 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 kind of step out of your comfort zone and just dive in head first. And it's just so refreshing and so new when you say to the Lord, "Thy will be done," because that's where the action is. It's like uh, if you want to have a radical experience in your life. Uh, say thy will be done because then you get to see God do stuff you know you're right there you're under the spout where the Holy Spirit comes out so to speak you know you get to see God work and move and and you get to be part of that sometimes God doesn't you don't see God doing anything you wonder where'd you go God or God what are you doing wrong and then all of a sudden days weeks or months pass by and you realize what God's been doing all along so we're so uh, so we invite you to 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 abandon yourself to God's will and we got with us today Father Bryce from uh, a, a, a cowboy priest, a true cowboy priest from uh, Wyoming, joining us. Aloha, Father Bryce. Aloha, Bear. Thanks for having me on. It's an you honor. know that old that old cowboy saying: "You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him surf." You know, but in your <laughs> case, <laughs> but in your case, you actually I saw some some pictures of you riding, uh, carrying a blow up stand up surfboard up into the mountains mm-hmm. yeah we call it mountain surfing <laughs> so we take uh yeah we, we uh grab our paddle boards this case it was just one our last one and then saddle the horses jump on the horses and just pack the uh paddle board clear up to these mountain lakes that are just awesome but kind of untouchable because they're so far away so you know that's a way for us to conquer them so to speak I know my wife. My wife and I mostly stand up paddle surf. You know, it's a kind of a new thing on the mainland, but here in Hawaii, it's been done for fifteen hundred years. It kind of faded here. Uh, there was only a couple of older men that did it here, uh, but we uh, we basically stand up paddle surf unless it's like if we just got to be sixteen foot plus here last week, then we'll prone surf. But um, but we got to do that. My wife's going to want to get on a horse and, and ride up into one of those those remote lakes and stand up paddle surf with you guys. We would just. We would just love to do that, but we know that you know. Looking at your your uh, your site, and what is the name of your site? It's WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. You got you post a lot of pictures of your life. You were raised apparently. You were raised on a ranch, right? So I grew up in a little town of Worland, Wyoming, and that's uh, just northern central part of Wyoming. And I'm I think I'm fifth generation. My mother's great grandparents homesteaded there. And we grew up off and on ranching. All the extended family farmed and ranch. So I grew up in the midst of it. And then after high school, I did ranch for a few years full time in Montana. 
Well, if you were if you were fifth generation, that goes back almost to the time when when Wyoming was first. I mean, was it at the eighteen fifties or eighteen seventies? Eighteen ninety when it, when it was made a state, and I think I think we uh, they homesteaded after it was a state. If I got my dates, but that's right. way back when right we think now. when we think of the the the, the western cowboy that was the 18 that was right after the civil war era that when when we think of that the west being kind of um, uh you know people m- moving there and, and developing ranches there so your family goes way back what was mm-hmm. it like what was it like being raised on a working ranch yeah like i said we grew up in town but my grandparents and all both sides of the family um farmed and ranch mainly growing up as a lot of farming um but that was just so good. I can. I mean, we had tons of cousins, and uh, man, we just grew up raw and real, as I like to say. I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just spent our summers just running, working, uh, getting hurt, <laughs> getting <laughs> yourself up. I mean, it was just it was just part of the gamut. Well, you know, you uh, I see pictures of you guys branding. So you actually you must have had cattle on that on your land. So this you? is and this is all up here during ministry or and here I'm in Gillette, Wyoming now as an associate pastor at St. Matthews. And so um what we do, I mean I just spend the spring and I help ranchers all over the place. And I grab guys and they jump in with me and, and we just run the circuit on local brandings. And uh, so that's all live stuff, you know, just here in the area of Catholics. Those are all Catholic ranchers in the area. What's that like uh what's that like branding? I mean what 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 is oh, that? I love it. There's <laughs> I feel like a, like a border collie dog chasing a ball. I <laughs> I could I would die before I quit. You know, I got yeah. this thing that uh, I got this thing that cowboys don't quit; they die. Uh, I love it, love it. Yeah, it's true, man. We I just and I love branding because that's where rodeo even got to start, man. I mean, yeah. in a sense, I mean, you're roping, you're dragging, it's rough and tumble, and uh, it's it's very conducive to the, especially the masculine human soul. You know, I, well, there's a there's different types of rodeos on the on the on TV, and one of them is the actual mm-hmm. ranch type rodeo. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and one of my friends here, um, Chris Goki, he's a helicopter pilot for the military, but he was a, he's a surfer and a golfer and a bull rider, and I he was raised uh, you know on a ranch, and I asked him, so what's the hardest of all of those, surfing, or golfing, or bull riding? He said golfing <laughs> and he's a good <laughs> golfer awesome. you know but yeah so so you, you you i know one of the things that you, you, you the statement i think it was your father or your grandfather said when it's branding time everyone turns 21 because everyone's got to get down oh, yeah. in the dirt and gritty and tumble and right well you are and then it's like uh even if you're you know way past prime 50 and that calf comes through the gate on the rope all of a sudden you're 21 and you're grabbing and you're, and you just, I mean, you just go into go mode, you know, yeah. and you pay for it the next day, but it's good. Well, I was, I was there in Boise and I was talking with this woman. I said, you know, when you brand a cow like that to keep, you know, it's a way of branding them to identify them. I, we always say for accounting purposes, uh, that's a cruel basis of accounting, right? Cause it's cruel. And then she, she said, yeah, that's a cow and you use a calculator to count all the cattle. It was getting pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's pretty deep, man. But you know, on, on, on what was it that began? That began. We're gonna. We got to break here in a minute or two. But what was it that began to? What was it about in your youth that began to draw you towards the priesthood? Yeah, man. I uh, I never thought of it as a young man. I really, or as a growing up, I was never inspired to. I. I moved to Montana right after high school, and I'll say the most single one decision in my life, the best decision I ever made, most crucial, was that first Sunday morning I woke up on my own. And I sat there and I thought for a minute, man, I guess it's up to me whether I want to go to Mass. Wow. And uh, I worked for my uncle, and I didn't even, hardly got that thought out of my head, and he knocked on the door, let's go. And we went to Mass. Wow. And uh, from from there, for me, it was just steady progression. One one. Uh, Lent, I was inspired by the example of my grandparents who had recently passed to go to daily mass, oh. and then that was a, that was a pretty that was a pretty rocket shot in my life. And then, um, you know, a lot of steps along the way, but it really was when I was ranching full time. Um, this was kind of later in my experience in Montana. And where, where were you in Montana? It was Montana? as good as it gets. Where were you in well, Montana? 
So Helena to begin with, right. and then on the ranch, it was south of Great Falls on the Smith River. Okay, we, we want to hear more about this when we come back from our break. We're talking with Father Bryce. He's a cowboy priest from Wyoming. And then, and your site again where they can listen to your hom- your homilies are awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, wyomingcatholiccowboys.com. How hard is that to remember? Wyomingcatholiccowboys.com. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. We want to remind you... Uh, that we have a school of manliness, uh, school bear school of manliness.com. That's bear school of manliness.com. And it's interesting because we have a three year cycle, uh, uh, leading men in just in, uh, it, uh, pursuing the virtues and growing as men, getting traction as men, but it's all cowboy themed. And then we have an opportunity to, meet, to talk with father Bryce. So we're pretty stoked about having mm-hmm. you here. We'll be right back with more of the bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Grit. Grit. That is true grit. It's one of my favorite terms. It's a word I use a fair amount in my forthcoming post-Civil War Western novel, Revenge and Redemption. Whether you got calluses or not doesn't determine a man or a woman of true grit. You can be a preacher or an office manager and have true grit. True grit comes from, well, gritting your teeth in tough conditions and then keeping your gear in action. A man or a woman with true grit just doesn't have quit. Doesn't mean there's no fear involved, nor the shaking of hands or knees. I've had to grit things out in terrifying conditions. No doubt, so have you. Jesus walked willingly to the cross of crucifixion, all the while sweating drops of blood and fighting depression but he got her done. That's what counts. Dr. Luke in his gospel wrote that Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus was determined to realize his destiny through the cross. Dang, that sure is true grit. The apostle Paul had one tough haul in bringing the gospel to the Roman Empire, writing, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. He had that keeping on, keeping on deal. Man or woman's got to know what's worth standing for and then standing for it no matter what the opposition, mistakes, setbacks, or number of battles lost during the war. It ain't over till it's over, partner. You'll be known less of a man or woman when needing true grit if you call out to the Lord for his courage and his faith and his power. Jesus did. Paul did. I do. Shoot, I do it nearly every day. True grit. Get it? Got it? Good. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year School of Manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Man, we really want to talk to you. I remember when I was uh, I was in Florida and I was praying with Jamie Derzapolsky at Spirit FM down there, and I had a, a radio show. I had a podcast, and I was doing little five minute segments for his Catholic radio show there, the Drive Home Show. And I was down there in Orlando, and we were praying. And I just had this I don't want to call it a vision, but I had this real clear image in my mind uh, that we that our ministry was to the guy in the black pickup truck, and. Uh, in other words, we wanted our ministry to be gritty enough and real enough that, that real men would be attracted to to the Lord through our ministry. And then I had an image of a, 
of a fire starting in Florida and one in Hawaii, and that's exactly what happened. We had a radio show on a station in Florida, and then Hawaii, and then of course, and then it, the vision was that it would go throughout the country, and it did when we got up when EWTN picked up our show. But our ministry is to men, and you know that that guy in the black pickup truck to me is an image of a guy that's very gritty and 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 wants the truth and 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 runs from uh, false uh, false uh, sort of that false soft male that so often is associated with Catholicism or with Christianity, the Ned Flanders type. But the problem with that, the, in that image that I had, there was a guy in a black pickup truck, and he had nothing in the bed of his truck, so his wheels were spinning and not getting any traction in the gravel. And, uh, and so I thought, that's the guy, we need to teach him how to put that tool bed in the back of that truck, that toolbox in the back of that truck, so that he can get traction. And then, uh, and then we were, uh, three days later, I was surfing with a friend of mine on the other side of Florida in Cocoa Beach, and this guy in a black pickup truck rolled through the parking lot, and uh, there was no, and his wheels weren't spinning because he had a big old heavy toolbox in the back of that truck. And as he drove by, Dennis and I go, that's just like what I was praying the other day. Look at that, you know. And, uh, and, and then as he rolled past us, he was checking out the surf and leaving, he rolled down the window of his truck, the back window and there was like a it looked like there was a, it was like a wild bobcat in the back of his back seat of his truck that's what we want we want you to have that wildness that untamed uh feeling about you because that's that's the kind of man that the lord can use and that's what our ministry is about and that's what the school of manliness is about so check it out go to bear school of com and join us on our on our quest to go deeper with god we have father bryce the catholic uh wyoming catholic cowboy uh priest with us, Father Bryce, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Thanks Adventure. Thanks so much. And where can people find you again? WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. And I'm jealous because I saw Father Mitch back while riding with you guys. I want to come out there. <laughs> so I want to. Awesome. You got to find an excuse for me to get out there. Uh, when done. you're when you're working on the ranch, it's a very dangerous thing. And I wanted to ask you, what kind of lessons, uh, life lessons, do you learn? Uh, you know, whether it's it, you know in, in terms of. Uh, Things like prudence or fortitude, courage, you know, courage. What kind of life lessons can you share with our men? Well, for sure, courage. But I think I think it's got to be guided by prudence, because there's a, I mean, there's a, you know, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. As they say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're in a situation, you do gotta you gotta step it up. But there's a time to get out of the way. And I, I think prudence, um, as you got me kind of thinking, is definitely an over and ar- overarching virtue. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot there. Um, we don't want to just be uh, just do whatever, you know. Just ah, uh, let's go do it. Um, you do want to be guided. What's the what's the best long term reasoning? So it's it's kind of all those cardinal virtues. But tell tell me about sense. this when you're when you're working in branding. It's for example, it's a kind of a chaotic situation. But you definitely have uh, rules that you live by when you're doing that. Every man, everyone. What what do you tell people? Like if I was to show up and start working with you, don't, don't you? There's kind of a guiding. Uh, there's a way you'd go about it. It looks chaotic, but yeah. one person does this, one person does that, and one of the things you don't you don't do mm-hmm. that. Good. So yeah, as you were kind of saying that, I always have to give my uh, my uh, pre ride discourse, which is when you're working cows, take nothing personal. <laughs> ah. I know, just because uh, I mean it can be you can be calling shots, and it's not like hey man, you're not yelling at anybody. It's a little bit of a joke. But there's truth in it. But I, as you kind of mentioned that, what the, really when it works well is when everybody does their job. And when it doesn't work well is when I try to tell somebody else how to do their job. You've just got to let them call the shots as they see best fit. So it's a real camarader- camaraderie. And because uh, if one guy tries to start mar- micromanaging like, no, go over there, move over there, you do that. And it just it turns chaotic. And then very uh, uh, the the level of the blood pressure level goes high. So if you can just calm and cool, everyone work together silently a lot of times and just do their job. It's a beautiful experience, real cool harm, harmony. And how do you how do you see that as as in the body of Christ? Yeah, good call. Well, I mean, you know, kind of shooting from the hip here. If you know, we are guided 
by the Spirit, you know, and in in we're all, you and I, members of the body of Christ, guided by the same Spirit. Um, I think, in a sense, that's what we got to rely on. And I always got this line, stay in your lane. You know, I got to trust you to do your job and not me think that I know how you to, for you to do your job better, right? Mm-hmm. You've got to act as in follow Christ as you see best fit, best fit, and I have to do the same, you know? So trusting that same spirit guiding us. You know, we can challenge each other and encourage each other and inspire each other, but ultimately in Hawaii we have a saying, a word, kuleana. And it's more than just saying, this is my job, or it's, it's more than saying, this is my stewardship. It's like saying, this is mine. God's given me this kuleana. Don't, don't uh, you know, if I ask for help or ask for advice, you give it to me. But if I don't, then, you know, it's none of your business sort of thing. Uh, I don't yeah. know how to say it. We want to be humble enough to receive, uh, to receive uh, help and encouragement and to even to be challenged and to grow. But at the same token, we need to take personal responsibility. What is, if it's my kuleana? Like here, if you were, if you were uh, here working uh, uh, at a restaurant and someone said, uh, and, and your, your job was to bust tables, but someone else came and bust that table for you, you would say, brah, that's my, my kuleana. That's my stewardship. That's my, that's my role. So that, what's, one, what's interesting, though, Father, is in the church today, we see that a lot of men have, have just stepped away from the role within the church, and the women have had to step up and fill that vacuum. Men are not taking care of their kuleana in the church itself yeah. or in their families. What would you say to them? Well, I totally agree um, in that dynamic. I think it's it's both ways. Um, you know, I and I think we both try to really present uh, the faith in a truly masculine way. I mean that it that it's. I mean, it's not that's not the only way, but we try to live our faith in a masculine way that it's attractive to others. And I I just don't know that everybody's seen that. And I think when you do see it, then it does attract the guy in the black pickup truck to to want to live his faith because we all want to live for something greater than ourselves. And what better thing than to live for God? Wow, that's heavy. Yeah, we 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 have men. You know, Father, I don't even use the word masculine anymore because it's been so mm-hmm. co-opted. I just use manly. Yeah, just go for it. And plus, it's politically <laughs> incorrect too, so I just use manly. Mm-hmm. But you know, there. But but it is true that. Um, uh, men have been have people can say, well, you know, societies redefine the roles of men, or, or you can say, well, you know, women have kind of taken over uh, some of the men's responsibilities, and that's 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 men talking like victims. <laughs> you know, it's not society, and it's not it's not um, that you've been pushed out of the way. You haven't you've you've left a vacuum. Men need to m- men need to begin to st- need to step up. And take that role of leadership, of protection, and and provision, and all the things that we see. Father, um, we've got to take a break here in just one minute. What would you say to that man right now in the black pickup truck who's been searching for God? Yeah, um, yeah. Don't be afraid. I, I, and I have one line. I just keep thinking of. You said it earlier. I always say, like Catholicism in particular. Catholicism is about being fully human. You know, it doesn't want to. Uh, rob our joy or our character he wants to like elevate it and uh, so uh, yeah it's definitely um, fuel in the tank you know it brings us alive God does and his church and what if it isn't a Chevy pickup Getting right I, back to I you. Know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know you love Chevys. <laughs> Chevys. <laughs> we'll be so if you've got a black pickup truck and you're not driving a Chevy, then you can ignore everything Father's been saying. <laughs> no. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wastick adventure and Father Bryce, uh, the Catholic cowboy priest from Wyoming. This is Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com, coming to you with a deep adventure moment. I'm in my home of Waikiki Beach. Earlier today, my beautiful bride, Cindy, and I paddled out. Nice head-high surf. Paddled into some beautiful waves together. We tandem surf together. You may not know this, but I'm a world champion tandem surfer. And Cindy and I paddle together. We get up together. She turns and faces me. I put her in a high overhead lift. 
and we surf the waves like that. And I've always thought that tandem surfing is a great example of what it means to be a soul in love with Jesus. We paddle really hard together. To me, that's that term determination. And to me, paddling is like praying. You have a vision, you pray, and we pray together. And things happen when a husband and a wife pray together. And then you paddle in. And then we get up together. And when we get up, she gets up and she comes back towards me. And I pull her back towards me. And she rests her head on my chest, kind of like the beloved, like John did with Jesus in the Last Supper, and like the beloved does in the Song of Solomon, resting on the, the bed of Solomon as she's being carried. She rests her head and she trusts in me, and she can feel my movement on the surfboard, and she flows with my movement. But then there comes the moment in our, our walk with Jesus. We paddle hard in prayer. We drop in fully committed to Jesus into a big wave. We get up and we rest in Him and trust in Him. But then there's that moment when she turns and she leaps and I lift her in an overhead lift. That leap of faith is what so many of us just never get around to. And it's where the adventure begun. You spend time with the Lord. You, you've given your life to the Lord. But He's nudging you to do something and you know what it is. There's a calling on your life. Maybe it's a little thing He's asking you to do right now that will lead to bigger things. Or maybe it's a thing that seems too big for you. But believe me, the adventure begins when you depart from the wide path and take that leap into the deep adventure that God has for you. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We love the mama bears here in our, here in our show. Uh, you, you know who you are. When we go into mass in the mornings, uh, we see uh, the women that are there often wearing a wedding ring and sitting by themselves and they're praying the rosary. We admire you. And in fact, you're probably the real heroes of the Catholic faith. And uh, especially uh, the way you care for your family and especially the men in your family. Um, you know, when we I had my cabin in, in uh, Glacier Park uh, up in Montana, I happened to build it right on a grizzly corridor. <laughs> what they called it it's like a 20 yard path that the grizzlies like to go down to the flathead river on because it had a certain berry that they liked and from time to time you would see the grizzlies and one thing you didn't want to do is get between a grizzly and her cubs you know there's no one more fierce so when we say mama bears we know you could be sweet cuddly mama bears but we're speaking to that fierce love that you have for your family and we love and appreciate your prayers and support for the ministry but we've done more than just we've decided we need to have a place for our mama bears so we have a we have a if you go to um, our website deepadventure.com and you click on um, the mama bears mug club we have actually have a, a community for you now it's it's a facebook like community a secret community where the women get together and they can challenge each other and encourage each other and inspire each other and especially some of them uh, would uh, come together there because they're looking for a place some arrows for their quiver and how they can reach their men the men in their lives for christ but um it's just it's we're led by shandy burke uh and we'd just love for you to go and become part of the mama bears and plus so you can support our ministry there too we're talking with father bryce he's a he's a cowboy priest from wyoming um and fa father uh we i love cowboys you know my new book the 12 rules of manliness is based on on the cowboy you know when i think about cowboys you think about the louis lamore westerns that i've read and by the way my f first editor was louis lamore's last editor isn't that amazing oh. yeah mm -hmm. um the mm -hmm. great cow western writer but i remember when you think about a cowboy you think about someone who 
true to his word, rides for the brand. What are some of the What are some of the characteristics you think of the of the Cowboys that you've known in your life? What What I, when I was in Boise, I asked this woman there. This man came up to me at my book signing table, and I looked up and I go, "Are you a cowboy?" And he goes, "Well, I've always worked on ranches." And his wife goes. He's a cowboy. He was probably in his late 70s. He's a cowboy. And the next day we were riding motorcycles, and they were the escort truck. And I asked her, so are the, are the men today uh, anything like – are the men today, any of the men, these, these bikers, are they kind of like cowboys? And she goes, they're not anything like cowboys. It was like she said that with a great sense of loss. What, to, what is that cowboy mystique? What is, that, the, what is it about a cowboy? What are the, the virtues of the cowboy that, we, that, that come to mind? Yeah. You know, so many, I can remember, uh, just from my own perspective on that question. I mean, growing up, uh, my heroes have always been cowboys. We grew uh. up the brandings uh, as kids. My dad was uh, roping, and, and I mean, just, uh, you know, I mean, all those old cowboy heroes wrapped up in one. And man, it inspired me. And looking back now, that's kind of where it all even began. But as you mentioned, Louis L'Amour, I, my cousin is a huge fan of Louis L'Amour. And he, he, he made this connection. He says, in every Louis L'Amour novel, there's always a woman at the end of it, a woman to save, you know? And I think of that virtue just in life, uh, the complementarity between man and woman. And I was, uh, you always go with a branding pin. But um, so, man, you know, we, we, iron sharpens iron when there's two of us working, you know, we, there's the competitiveness. You know, but then you throw a, a cute little cowgirl on the krill fence, and all of a sudden, boy, howdy! You know, I mean, we you work harder, up, right? You know, it, it, it's good, and it's and you know, it can be taken the wrong way. But it, but that dynamic is so true. How a woman just so encourages us and brings out the men in us, and I think the same with our Lord. I really do. I think I see Him carrying the cross. And then, and then make an eye contact with, with his mother, Mary, mm. and just being like, it's go time, you know, and he just he really mans up and, and completes the mission. And so I, I think that virtue is very much in all of us as men, uh, the cowboy theme for sure. You know, and a priest. Yeah, you know, you think about the Louis Lamore Westerns. Yeah, there always is a girl, almost always there's a girl that he's, he's uh, protecting. And, and and a lot of times it's not love. It's not like a romantic thing, but most of the, quite often it is. You never see them uh, having uh, sex outside of marriage. You know, it's not it's not like that. It's true love, true self donation, truly laying his life down for that woman and truly cherishing her. And often it isn't until the very last page where the, he gets that squeamish feeling and finally said, you know. Uh, you know, may, you know, lets her know, her know how he feels, but she, she the, 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 that cowboy in the Louis L'Amour westerns is standing between her and and uh, you know danger, and that, and that, and and he does that with a certain humility, and he does it in a sacrificial way, and he does it in a way that doesn't expect to be rewarded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and cherishing yeah, the true. woman. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Father. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, no, it's just so true, and on all sorts of fronts. And I, I, I think of my dad a lot. Um, so, and and ride for the brand. That's kind of my my go to slogan in a lot of ways. And I just dad just turned seventy, and we just um, oh, I made him an old photo kind of book of throughout the years. And I, but I put on there to dad, uh, a man who always rides for the brand, just never his own. And the, the wow. loyalty, the loyalty that my dad showed me in the cowboy show. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to own your own spread to be a cowboy. I mean, we ride for the brand. I don't own a ranch, you know, and, uh, but I ride for Christ, you know? Yeah. It's one of the themes of our school of manliness. It's one of the chapters of my book is riding for the brand. Mm-hmm. You know, I have this image of three cowboys uh, 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 riding away and there's a cross in the background in the sunset, you know, riding for, what does it mean to you to ride for the brand as a, as a Catholic? Mm-hmm. Well, there's loyalty involved in that, um, that I'm dedicated to this mission. For me, it's not my own brand. Um, and, uh, and the selflessness that, that comes for that. So I, and I, I, I like saying, so I come up with them, but I, you know, like, um, 
I work for God, not for money. You know, I like uh, this uh, this mission uh, that I'm on is not, uh, you know, for the paycheck by any means. And I, so many cowboys do the same. I mean, they, mm. I mean, most of the ranchers I know, if they if they actually made a dollar an hour for their work, I'd be surprised. Right. right. <laughs> what are some of the things that you remember your dad saying? What kind of sayings oh, that yeah. kind of, you know oh, how yeah, that... Yeah, he's, that's probably where I get him, but uh, uh, plan your work and work your plan, you know. Um, lead, follower, get the hell out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there's several. Let's kind of come to the... Give us a right couple now. more. Give us a couple more. Okay. Um Oh, yeah. All's well that ends well. That's our famous. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you go out there as long as you got the cows moving. <laughs> uh, what's mine? I'll give you one of mine. Then. Yeah, let's hear some of yours. I want to hear yeah. some of yours. The the true mark of a cowboy is not if you get bucked off, but whether you get back on again. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, last time I, I remember dismounting a cowboy, a, a horse about two years ago, and I was going to be really cool about it. You know, like I see everybody just kind of, you know, just kind of slide off that horse really cool. I ended up underneath the horse looking up at the stars, and there were, and there were no stars. It was the middle of the day, but I was seeing stars. So, yeah, so I had to get back up on that horse, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so what else uh, what else does your uh, do you think about when you think of the Louis L'Amour, the cowboy virtue? Well, and and this is where uh, I guess my whole mo, you know, the way I roll is I'm a son before I'm a father. Mm. Okay, and I and I think that's crucial for us as is I mean as humans. And I look at our Lord and He nails it. Uh, he owned His sonship way before He was the Messiah. You know, I mean, it was always out of that sonship that he that he acted in the Messiah role. Now I get it; he was both always, but but he he only he was uh, it was always father. You know, you can only call mm. father father from the pr- perspective of the son. Wow. So uh, in my ministry, and and I, what I encourage guys to do is is to own that sonship, like you know, Bryce. You know, that's that's who I am, and then from there you know, act in mission. I'm Father Bryce too, you know, and I never divorce the two, but I can distinguish and I always live from that core, that center of my identity as a baptized child, son of God. Yeah, it's, you know, you you, you talk about, um, one of your homilies I saw was tr- a gritty, is it tough grace or gritty grace or? I, I call it tough grace. Yeah. yeah, tough grace. What do you mean by that? Well, and I shoot from the hip a lot of the times from my own ways, you know, in a calculated way. But what I mean, and I was St. Rosalema, and she said, you know, um, grace comes after tribulation. And it's it's just, you know, it's, it's awesome to walk outside and have the sun hit you and smell the flowers. And that's great. But what about when uh, my spouse dies? I'm diagnosed with cancer. Traumatic events happen. Um, is there grace involved in that? Yeah, a lot of grace, and it's grace that really takes root and bears fruit in our lives. But in the moment, it's hard to see it. Um, but that's not what I, I distinguish between cheap grace and tough grace. It's all grace, uh, but we just need to really be prepared to weather those storms that are going to uh, bring the green grass that comes afterwards. Yeah, I love that. It's like after the rain comes the the, the rich green grass. We're talking to Father Bryce, the cowboy priest from Wyoming. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to 
is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to thank you for all you uh, who love our TV show, Long Ride Home. You know, if you uh, go to bearschoolofmanliness.com and you subscribe, you receive uh, all a- access to all of our episodes of our motorcycle TV show, including the ones that haven't even aired on EW10 yet. yet. You get all of my, my daily catechisms that, that we post. Uh, you get all of... Uh, all of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows and so much more. Uh, so go to bearschoolofmanliness.com. This is for the women can go there too, and and uh, and subscribe and become part of the uh, part of the pack and uh, and uh, and and receive all those benefits. And also you become for the men they become part of the Bears Man Cave. Uh, it's like a Facebook group, but it's not on Facebook group, not on Facebook. And we have the same thing for the Mama Bears. So come join the pack. We'd love to have you guys become a bigger part of the ministry. We have today, and we appreciate you so much, by the way. We have today with us Father Bryce, the uh, Catholic cowboy from Wyoming. Father Bryce, aloha. Aloha, Barry. I, I remember leaving my, my Montana uh, cabin and driving through Wyoming. And Father, it was early in the morning just before way before sunrise when i drove through wyoming it was about to be sunrise i saw thousands of antelope thousands thousands not a couple here and there right mm-hmm. wyoming is amazing so beautiful yeah yeah a lot of a lot of antelope and just tons of diversity terrain animals climate it's it's the whole gamut everything about it you know we were talking earlier about how louis lamour was my f- the last editor for louis lamour the great western writer was my first editor lou aronica was his name oh, yeah. um and we were talking about how in your brother is a, is a big fan i think you said your brother is a big fan of it because and he says that at the end of every single uh louis lamour movie somewhere in that book there's a man pro- the hero is protecting a woman almost always um but you know one of the and, and so one of the themes in my book, the rules of manliness, is 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 cherish your woman. And one of the women that you cherish is your wife or the one that you're in love with or going to marry. But there's also uh, there's also this woman, Our Lady, Mary. Mm-hmm. Cherish your woman. There's Jesus called her woman. So what mm-hmm. what do we what what is the role of Mary in our lives? Think about Jesus and his his sonship, not only to the Father but to Mary. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I, the whole dynamic—it's true in every vocation. It's not good for man to be alone, you know. Mm. So even if we are celibate, or you know, we still need that feminine component. And I just wanted to—you you like Lou the more. I love Lou the more. I also like Matt Dillon. He's kind of mm-hmm. my favorite cowboy. Yeah. Matt Dillon was a celibate man. He was single, right? And that's uh, right. And that's, that's one reason why he could just um, be a wildcat, you know, to act so bravely. But he also had a woman he protected, Miss Kitty. That's right? true. So I, I love gun smoke, but it's an example. Um, I feel the same way definitely for Jesus. Uh, I mean, he's the, he's the prototypical man. He's the man, right? And uh, it's not good for man to be alone. Who was the feminine counterpart in his life? His mother Mary, in a very chaste, beautiful way. I can only imagine that uh, she inspired him uh, to act the way he did in the way any man's wife or would in a human way. And I, I mean, personally, um, Mary is a huge component, especially to the priesthood, without a doubt, for all of us, because she's really, truly that only woman that can totally satisfy our feminine desires in a total chaste way, right? Um, but for the priest in particular, who is celibate, does not have that visible spouse, yeah, the church, but who's the image of the church? Our Blessed Mother. It's very crucial for us to, for me, all of us, but especially the priest, to have a deep uh, intimate relationship with her um she plays that that feminine counterpart to us inspires us in a lot of ways 
You know, even when I wasn't, uh, I, for a while I, I was raised Catholic, but for a while I went, I, in, in pursuit of going deeper with God, I went into the non-denominational church area. And uh, I never really understood the role of Mary as a young Catholic. I know we weren't worshiping her, but I didn't understand the concept of the communion of the saints, that we can ask those who have gone before us to pray for us and things like that. And in the Protestant world, there would be this ca- castigated Catholics about their love for Mary. And then I would defend her, even though I didn't understand, I would defend her. Um, she's Jesus' mom. I was with Father Don Calloway in Israel um, with his mother. And it was so neat to see their relationship, how she was always helping him and, hey, don't forget to do this. And, you know, carrying his book, you know, just making sure everything went smoothly for him and his love for her. And I, I found myself say, asking his mom, hey, can you tell Father Don this for me? Mm-hmm. You know, like she, she was like, you know, it was almost like, what, why, 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 what do you tell people that don't understand why Mary? Why is she there? Doesn't she just get in the way? Why don't we just go directly to Jesus? Uh, can we go directly to Jesus? Why, why, do, why do Catholics love her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, it's, there's a lot there. I, I think kind of goes back to the witness of Christ in his life, but then his last words on the cross. First, woman, behold your son. Then, son, behold your mother. You know, and that's that's a uh, you know that's his last words. But it kind of sums it up in a in a sense. And then you go, theologically, you know, through our baptism, Jesus has become our brother. So de facto, she's become our spiritual mother. Mm-hmm. But then broaden it out a little bit. I, I'm big on the fatherhood. You know, this I'm a son before I'm a father. Well. Um, just in that very dynamic you said, whether it's a friend to his mother or to him, or in a family, me to want to go to dad, it's it's a very um, easy route to go to your mother in order to get your dad. Now, it's not she's not the mediator between us and the Father, only Jesus is, but she leads us to Jesus. Do whatever he tells you, you know? And, and so um, I just feel like, Entrusting ourselves to her as Jesus commanded us to do, it's a direct line to him. And then the other beautiful component of that is that, um, you know, between the woman and the, and, the, and the devil, there's enmity. You know, in her arms, the devil can't reach us. So there's just a, a, a tremendous goodness in her arms. I always kind of feel like she keeps us in the saddle of sonship. Mm, that's well said. You know, for me, I, the other day I was surfing, and um, I know this sounds funny, but I just felt like, I just felt like, because when I, Mary, for me, for many years, uh, since returning to the church, is the person I go to battle with. You know, my rosary is, I think, mm. hanging behind me. You know, I've learned to go to battle with Mary, but it took me a while to understand that she really loves me. You know, Mary really loves each person, too. And I know when I was surfing the other day, I just had this beautiful ride, and I just said a hell Mary and I just felt her joy that uh, my own remembrance of her and then her her treasuring my my experience and love for life you know just just using this physical body that God gave us so when we say how in Louis L'Amour westerns the the um, the uh, there's always a woman that the man is protecting and we think of the woman in our lives or maybe our mothers or maybe our sisters or friends or maybe our wife or our, our fiance or girlfriend. And there's also the woman we cherish, Mary. But the church is a woman, too. The church is someone that we, we cherish. Tell us about that, especially as a priest. Well, it's, it's a unique uh, dimension of our spiritual life, but especially for the priest. So I was, um, well, what I came, part of my journey ranching and stuff i mean uh but anyway when i when I really uh kind of noticed this deeper call and desire i was even engaged at the time wow um but there was other components to that it's beautiful experience and um tons of respect for for her but uh there was a there was something in my heart and she wasn't catholic and it caused me to un- kind of realize that man i there's something i didn't love her unconditionally because I kind of wanted to change her. That's another story. But what I did <laughs> notice, what I did notice, I loved the church unconditionally. And I'm like, what is that desire? I mean, I loved her like a spouse. 
I don't you know. Love, I mean, you anyway, love the church that's, like that's, a spouse. You said, yeah. yeah, yep, and that's that's very priestly, and uh, and maybe everyone has it. That's great, but I I think for the priesthood because that is that is then our spouse is the church, you know. And you talk about the chasteness of the of the Louis L'Amour Western or the cowboy. Uh, we got one minute. Speak to the speak to the chasteness uh, for men out there that are not married. In the what do you speak to them about celibacy and chasteness? That maybe they want to be married, yeah. but and maybe they're not called to the priesthood. But the being being pure. You talked about it as I, one of your things was cracking the whip. Good <laughs> Jesus coming in and cleaning uh, house and purity. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I don't know. I mean, chastity is such a beautiful virtue. It's so freeing. And celibacy in particular, that's how, you know, priests are called to live chastity. We're all called that virtue, but celibacy is off the charts and it's the freedom that it gives a person to be a wild man for God, you know, in a, in a prudent way. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I, you know, I've already died. That's why I wear the black, you know, and I don't, you know, you can't kill me because I've already died to myself and, and celibacy is one image of that. I've also wow. risen to. He, he, for those of you who didn't see, he just uh, flicked his finger at his at the white the, the Roman collar, the white Roman collar, a, a vision, a, an image of his of, of, the, of our rex, resurrection. There's little nuggets that you've shared with us throughout this 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 hour that's just been phenomenal. We've been talking with Father Bryce, the Catholic cowboy priest from Wyoming. Father, we got to go. And one of the things we say here in uh, Deep Adventure Ministries before we leave is aloha, ha means breath. Aloha means to give breath. So we're yeah. going to do an aloha. So I'll, I, I, maybe you can join me. I don't know, but we do it kind of long yeah. and kind of loud. May the breath of the Holy Spirit, remember Jesus breathed his Holy Spirit on his disciples. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for being with us. Thank you. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict Exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our DeepAdventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.